Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the excellent pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Schiffman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. Uh, the year 2021, I had to pause for a second there to make sure I got the year right, is uh, winding down. So I, I think it's a quiet weekend on racing. What do you want to talk about this week? Well, I want to know if you will be in full Santa Claus regalia next week, first of all. Are you bringing out the hat and the beard? Um, I don't know, Brian. Uh, we'll, we'll have to see. We'll, we'll wait and see for that. We'll, we'll all be eagerly awaiting that. Matt, it's the best of show, not the best of Horse Center of 2021, but of course the best of American racing of 2021. It was a tumultuous year. It was an interesting year. I think there were a lot of really good horses that ran in 2021, Matt. So we are going to recap, not quite like the Eclipse Awards, but we're going to do our own version as we often do here on Horse Center. A little bit different, but it's the best of 2021 show. Sir, are you ready? Let's go. All right. The first category we're going to talk about, Matt, is best sprinter at and that, I think there are a ton of horses that uh, we could have chosen for the best sprinter of 2021. Dr. Scheival, uh, Aloha West, the Breeders' Cup winner. Golden Pal, a, a winner of the Breeders' Cup the last two years. Uh, Gamin was dominant up until the Breeders' Cup. CC won the Breeders' Cup and had a very good year. But we both landed on the same horse, Matt. Who is it? Yeah, Brian, and, and, and as you mentioned, clearly there are a lot of horses that threw in some really nice races, some really big victories in the course of the year. But uh, this is one category where we agree we both went with the three-year-old Jackie's Warrior. Yeah, Matt, for me, Jackie's Warrior was the most consistent horse all year long. I, I think there's a couple questions here, both with our best of show and the Eclipse Awards. How Just how important, how dominant is what happens on Breeders' Cup Day, because if it is the end-all, be-all, the Breeders' Cup, the World Championships this year at Del Mar, then Jackie's Warrior probably will not be awarded Eclipse Award, but he gets our vote as best sprinter, Matt. I think he was terrific all year long. He ran in nothing but big races all year long. Four big wins. That grade one win over life is good, is, is a difference maker for me, but he was so dominant in some other grade two races throughout the year. From start to finish, I just felt like Jackie's Warrior was our best sprinter, despite the fact that he did not bring it his best on Breeders' Cup Day. Yeah, I agree with that, Brian, obviously, because uh, uh, that, we came up with the same horse. And for me, that big victory over uh, Life is Good uh, is significant. Um, I don't know. I think it's going to be interesting to see whether uh jackie's warrior ends up with an eclipse award or not you know um but we sh we shall see with that this show is not the eclipse awards this is our favorites our top choices and and for the for the seven race uh campaign this year for the four victories from jackie's warrior um that's why i went with this uh asmus and runner yeah, yeah, the Son of McLean's music was terrific in six sprints. One race was not a sprint where he was beaten by essential quality of all horses. And uh, even one of those two losses that he did do uh, have sprinting, I thought was absolutely terrific performance. Uh, again, Dr. Scheival, Aloha West, Golden Pal, the turf horse, Cece, Gamin. A uh, ton of interesting questions as we go forward in this division in the Eclipse Award. But our choice is best sprinter of 2021 was Jackie's Warrior. How about the best miler, Matt? This is an award you won't see in the Eclipse Awards, but I think the mile is an important thing, uh, an important uh, um, uh, entity in racing. I, I love mile races, brings the best sprinters against the best distance horses. This is something that's big over in other countries, Europe, for, for instance, for sure. Who's our best miler of 2021? Yeah, and clearly uh, the 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 breeders feel that the miles an important distance because they always uh, put that at the top of their sales sheets for uh, their stallions. And we we agree again here, Brian. Uh, we both went with life is good, uh, a dominant victory in the Breeders Cup Dirt Mile for uh, uh, life is good uh, for trainer Todd Pletcher. Um, the uh, uh, life is good. Uh, I think big things coming ahead 
for that horse. We shall see, but uh, had a great uh, had a great year. Uh, five races, four wins, one second. We mentioned the second to uh, Jackie's Warrior uh, already, which was an ambitious ambitious race for which to return from a layoff uh, uh, that Life is Good had to take uh, beginning in March. Yeah, the fact that we agreed on this one, that was no surprise at all to me. Life is Good, I, I think, is the obvious choice here is America's best miler in 2021. He ran three times as a mile. Uh, he beat Medina Spirit early in the year in the Sham Stakes. Uh, the Kelso was his first race after his only loss. And, of course, he was dominant that day at Belmont Park. And then the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile at Del Mar sealed the deal. So he did it all over the country despite not having a huge resume this year. But the, those three miles alone uh, were enough to win the award for Life is Good. I, I think the best miler outside of life is good that we saw Matt was probably space blues uh the go dolphin charlie appleby runner that came over for one race in america big win in the breeders cup mile on the grass but uh can't compare to what life is good did this year yeah i agree with that brian life is good our best miler how about the next category another one matt that's not on the eclipse awards i like it it's it's called the best marathoner the best marathoner, Matt. We don't need to go 26 miles to find this one. And this is the first category, Matt Schiffman, where we disagree. I'm going to let you go first with your choice as the uh, 2021 best marathoner. Yeah, I'm probably stretching the parameters or, or, uh, uh, or maybe shrinking the parameters uh, of this category a little bit. Uh, um, I selected a horse that had the had a big victory in a mile and a half race. And normally that's a long, long race. But when you're talking about marathoners, there there are the horses that run uh, more than 12 furlongs. They go 13 furlongs, 14 furlongs, I think is the direction that you went. But uh, I'm recognizing essential quality in here for that huge victory in the Belmont Stakes going 12 furlongs. Um, but combined with that, the 10 furlong victory in the Travers, which these days is a long race uh, with the with the disappearing uh, distance races in our country. So I wanted to recognize essential quality. Yeah, and, and, I, and I like that pick. I honestly do, Matt. I went a different way, as you said, but uh, I, I think, uh, yeah, anything 11 furlongs and more for me is a marathon these days. And of course, Matt and I are not wanting to let go of the history of American racing where distance racing used to be much more important. Uh, the Jockey Club Gold Cup was much longer than it is today, uh, Matt. Uh, mares like Shuvi uh, won when they ran two miles for the uh, uh, Jockey Club Gold Cup and horses, great horses like Kelso, of course. But the marathon is less than what it used to be in America. So we, we're, we're gonna dip down to 11 furlongs or more and if I had to pick the best race at that category, dirt or turf, it was essential qualities Belmont. So uh, not a bad pick at all by yourself and, and something maybe outside uh, uh, the box a little bit. I, I kind of stayed inside the box more. I did look for turf and dirt, but uh, I, I had to go with Lone Rock. Lone Rock, a six-year-old son of Majestic Warrior. He's still racing. In fact, he's... Uh, uh, slated to run again soon at Oaklawn Park, interestingly at nine furlongs, but at a uh, mile and a half or farther, Lone Rock has run seven straight races up until this uh, coming race at Oaklawn Park, Mad, and he was the winner of five of them. He was second in the other two. Uh, he was terrific at distances of a mile and a half or more, and, and some of these marathons, these big graded stakes marathons that he won, like uh, uh, like the last one at Del Mar and even more so at Belmont uh, for the Brooklyn. He was a dominant force. Yeah, absolutely. And Brian, he did it all over the country, West Coast, East Coast, five different racetracks in there. I can't argue, Brian, with your selection of the, uh, you know, the typical, what we consider marathon or now. He wins the longest races that we offer uh, on the dirt in our country. Yeah, absolutely. I didn't see a turf course that necessarily, uh, we, I guess we could have gone with uh, 
you know, a horse like Ibra who won big races at a mile and a half. But uh, Lone Rock for me was the uh, was the marathoner of the year. And uh, interestingly, I think they're going to try to shorten him up a little bit next year and see if he can beat really good horses at 10 for long. So we'll see. But for 2021, essential quality, says Matt, I go with Lone Rock as the best marathoner. The next category, Matt, is the top turf horse. And again, we disagree. And let's face it, the Americans were not exactly thrilling as far as our turf horses in 2021. So I want to know who you chose as your top turf horse. Yeah, and that was my feeling exactly, Brian. There wasn't an American horse, male or female, that uh, wowed me enough to be my pick. And thus, we both ended up with non-American horses in here. I went with the horse that you just mentioned. I went with Yabir, um, who has ended his campaign with three wins in a row. The last two coming in the United States and, and some people, you know, if, if you want to look, uh, talk about the eclipses again, don't want to consider a horse that's come over and won only once in America. Your beer has two uh, with first winning the Jockey Club Derby at Belmont Park and then coming back and winning the big one, winning the Breeders' Cup turf um out at Del Mar this year so I went with your beer yeah and, and I'm thankful I went with your beer betting uh this yeah. year because he was a a good horse to me but I didn't choose him um three-year-old I, I just felt like the Breeders Cup turf was uh, a little bit lackluster um he he was a deserving winner of the race but it, it just didn't excite me on the other hand uh, and, and people might disagree with me completely because I'm picking a horse who only went, ran one race in America. But the Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Turf, I, I, I thought it was actually a stronger race overall than the Breeders' Cup Turf uh, or the Breeders' Cup Mile for that, uh, for that instance, uh, for that example. But Love's Only You, um, you know, she was terrific. You know, we saw her, we were watching Dubai when she got beat, I think it was about a half length by Mistriff, one of the best horses in the world this year. The Japanese mare uh, trained by uh, or a daughter of Deep Impact, a granddaughter of my pal Sunday Silence up there, Matt, was uh, terrific all over the world. Dubai, she won big races in Hong Kong. In fact, she just won the Hong Kong Cup this past weekend after winning the Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Turf. And, and those races she ran to, to win the Breeders' Cup Billion Mare Turf. And then maybe I am looking a little bit at the international accomplishments of Love's Only You. She became the first Japanese horse ever to win a Breeders' Cup race. So I think that's something as well. I, I just was electrified a little bit more by her than a beer uh, in the Breeders' Cup. So my top turf horse, Matt, is Love's Only You. Yeah, can't complain with that, Brian. Loves only you was a horse that I liked um, in the Breeders' Cup also. So uh, I think fair enough to recognize these two terrific uh, turf horses. Yeah, and if I was going to go American, if I was going to go a horse based in America, it would be domestic spending, Matt, because I think domestic spending was terrific in his two wins and one second. But only three races, unfortunately, is not enough for me. Uh, over the year and domestic spending. If he ha had a chance to run in the Breeders' Cup, I think maybe things would have been different in the Breeders' Cup turf. But uh, for us, it's the international squad here as our 2021 top turf horse. All right, Matt, we're going to go into some divisions first, but I want to uh, I want to say, uh, I want to remind everyone here to subscribe to our YouTube channel. I can't tell you how important it is to Matt and I that you do subscribe to our YouTube channel here at HRN. And uh, go ahead and turn on those notifications so you don't miss another episode of Horse Center that we love to do for you every week. Matt, our next category here in the best of 2021 show is the top two-year-old. Hey, again, we disagree. This is three in a row, Matt. I want you to tell me who your top two-year-old was. Again, I think we've got two really nice horses uh, to talk about. I guess when I was making my pick, I was thinking about two-year-olds in terms of uh, the Kentucky Derby coming down, you know, coming up in May, uh, the biggest race in the, in, in America. Um, and I wanted to recognize uh, Smile Happy, the son of, uh, of Run Happy. I, I was very, uh, it was very pleasant for me to pick 
a son of run happy uh of course the stallion that we see sponsoring everything by a uh, mattress mac uh mac and vale um but he's a good man that mattress mac uh, he's good for racing he is philanthropic he's always out there helping people in need doing so when hurricanes hit doing so in kentucky right now and and uh smile happy for Kenny McPeak is two for two uh, in his career. A nice maiden special weight win at Keeneland and then a very impressive uh, closing move to win the Kentucky Jockey Club. He's one that I could see uh, going down the Kentucky Derby Trail and being a factor on the first Saturday in May. Knock on wood if things go well. Yeah, and, and I, first off, I just want to say, why isn't a horse center sponsored by Run Happy? <laughs> Got to give Mattress Mac a call on that one. Uh, yeah, Smile Happy. It, I, I think it's easy when we, we talk about top two-year-old to kind of get a little bit Kentucky Derby-centric with it, and that's the way you went, and that's that's cool. Um, Smile Happy, you know, coming from off the pace at both a, a two-turn maiden debut performance at Keeneland and then a, a, a really powerful win in the Kentucky Jockey Club, uh, a, a key precursor to the Kentucky Derby over the track of Churchill Downs. An exciting horse, two races. I went with a horse who had a little bit more. She she was really my top two-year-old of 2021. I, I wasn't kind of looking forward at all, maybe like you were, Matt. I, th I just thought she was the best two-year-old of 2021. Of course, I'm speaking of Echo Zulu, that exciting daughter of Gun Runner trained by Steve Asmussen. That she won races, she won all her races, and she won races between five and a half furlongs and a mile and sixteenth. She did it on opposite coasts as well. Echo Zulu four for four. There was simply not another filly that could run with her this year. Three Grade One wins, Matt. Again, Grade One wins on opposite coasts. Um, for me, this was rather easy. Echo Zulu was my top two-year-old. Hey, Brian, that's a great pick. And I like you went a little bit out of the, bo out of the box and went with a filly uh, in this category. I've got nothing but respect for uh, Echo Zulu and uh, what she accomplished this year. A daughter of Gunrunner, another uh, great young stallion. Yeah, and, and Jack Christopher was awesome in two races. And obviously Corniche, uh, trained by Bob Baffert, uh three for three two great one wins he's i'm sure going to get the eclipse award on the male side so some uh good options for us here but i went echo zulu matt went smile happy made matt happy with that selection as the top two-year-old of 2021 the top three-year-old matt once again we disagree uh i'm gonna go first this time we already talked about him a little better you talked about him more than me already my pick was essential quality Five for seven this year. Uh, he didn't run a bad race. Both of his races that he was beaten, unfortunately, they were in two huge races, the Kentucky Derby and the Breeders' Cup Classic. Uh, uh, he got beat, but he ran well in both. And uh, I just think top to bottom, essential quality was the most consistent, the best three-year-old I saw this year. Uh, wins in the Travers and the Belmont uh, did it for me. And you're going to talk about a horse who I think is in a real uh dog fight with uh with essential quality as far as the eclipse award goes yeah and uh you know it, it, i guess it's only fitting that you chose essential quality and i can't argue with that pick brian you know uh from my pick in the in the marathon category that i'm a big fan of essential quality uh that it comes down to him and medina spirit of course uh for our choices here and no doubt in the Eclipse Award voting. Um, I went with uh, Medina Spirit, Brian, uh, um, with uh, uh, two big grade ones, crossing the finish line first in the Kentucky Derby, and then the awesome again, second in the Breeders' Cup Classic. He had a great, uh, a great year, Brian, a long campaign, a lot of starts. Um, so, and I don't know, uh, I, I'm not agreeing or disagreeing with this statement, but somehow, I think that Medina Spirit is going to end up as the official Kentucky Derby winner. Yeah, I, I think there's a good chance of that. But on the other hand, I, I, you know, I'd be lying if I said the fact that he returned with a positive test after the Kentucky Derby is uh, in my thinking just a little bit. But, but honestly, uh, Essential Quality, I said, didn't run any bad races. Medina Spirit was kind of well beaten in, in a few of those. Santa Anita Derby, certainly the San Felipe 
and, and even the Preakness, uh, he was beaten beaten down a little bit more than essential quality was in either of his defeats. So that was something I thought of. You know, I understand why people want to go with Medina Spirit here because he he was ahead of essential quality, only one while winning, but he was ahead in both their meetings. But in that same line of thought, you'd have to pick life is good over Medina Spirit because he was certainly better than Medina Spirit in the two times they raced. So I, again, I kind of went with the overall picture. If you just look at grade one wins, they each had two. I kind of favor the Belmont and the Travers just a little bit more than the Kentucky Derby. The awesome again, tough decision though. It absolutely is a tough decision. And I'm glad that you brought up that life is good wrinkle uh, topping Medina Spirit twice because uh, when Medina Spirit supporters for the for the Eclipse Award uh, state their case. They always bring up that uh, two finishing twice ahead of essential quality. And then I always think, hey, 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 but you know, wait a second, essential uh, uh, life is good, beat Medina Spirit twice. So, uh, you know, you can use that head to head thing when it's convenient. And that's often when people use it. That's right. And, and Onion was not better than Secretary, Matt. So, uh, you know, that, 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 that's a completely different example. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's not always head to head. And the Breeders' Cup, you know, uh, Medina Spirit outgamed the Central Quality for second there. But I, I think the race was already over when Medina Spirit was inching clear of Essential Quality. So, uh, yeah. Hey, essential quality. It's a shame he won't be back next year. It's even a much bigger shame that Medina Spirit, of course, has been lost for good. The passing of Medina Spirit, but two great three-year-olds and Matt and I went a different way with our top three-year-old of 2021. All right, Matt, we continue the best of 21, 2021 with one of my favorite categories. It's the race of the year. And I, I really was surprised that we came to agreement on this one, Matt. We've put down the same race as the best of 21 race of the year. So it must have been pretty good. Yeah, Brian, you know, uh, awful lot of races uh, have taken place from January to December, but we both ended up with the Belmont Stakes. We both ended up with the test of the champion. Maybe it was that, maybe in the fact that it's a mile and a half and it was a fast running of the Belmont Stakes. It was a wonderfully contentious battle between Essential Quality and Hot Rod Charlie down the stretch. Yeah, it was a, it was a terrific race, and um, I think I think you hit on it a little bit there. The test of the champion, because the Belmont Stakes a mile and a half is not what it used to be in American race, and we've already talked about that. And and often I think the Belmont Stakes is a little bit anticlimactic, especially if it doesn't have a triple crown on the line like it didn't this year. But on the other hand, when I finally decided, hey, this is a really good three-year-old crop, it was because of the Belmont Stakes. I think you had two of the best horses in America really running their race. I, th I thought Hot Rod Charlie, you could argue that no horse ran a better race in a losing effort this year. Maybe life is good and the Jerkins Memorial is up for that category as well. But for me, the best losing performance of 2021 was Hot Rod Charlie's performance in the Belmont Stakes. He ran his eyeballs out in, in a beautiful mile and a half race. This is what a mile and a half race could be. Uh, Hot Rod Charlie really was pressured in fast fractions and he kept going. The two of them, essential quality Hot Rod Charlie, leaving a good field behind them in their dust. You had the Preakness winner in there. You had the Santa Anita Derby winner in there and, and other good horses. And they just were above and beyond that day. It was a, it was a beautiful race. Uh, I was sitting there with a bunch of uh, multi-race wagers to Hot Rod Charlie and Essential Quality. So I couldn't lose. I would have won a lot more money if Hot Rod Charlie won, but I couldn't help appreciate what Essential Quality did to run them down an inch clear of, uh, of a great performance by Hot Rod Charlie in this year's Belmont Stakes. Yeah, it was a it was a great uh, battle. Uh, two really good horses, uh, uh, the mile and a half, the test of the champion, all all, all the reasons that uh, smart guys like us ended up with that as the race of the year. Smart guys like us. Oh boy, <laughs> We're, we we might get roasted for that. Uh, you you might have been better, might have been better off saying good looking guys like us. I don't well, know. that too. Hey. <laughs> Any, anyway, we got a few more categories here on the Best of 21. I hope you're enjoying the show, folks, because it's fun to put together. Our next one is the Female Horse of the Year, Matt. 
surely I'm going to go with my top turf horse, Love's Only You, but but no, I'm not. Uh, we we agree on this one. Who is it? Oh, we had to, Brian. Uh, uh, we both chose Latruska. What a wonderful campaign the older mayor had throughout the year. So many grade ones at so many different racetracks. Yes, yes, it was a little bit of a disappointing uh, end of the year when uh, she just didn't run her race in the Breeders' Cup. But, you know, you, you, just, can't, you just can't keep rattling off big ones like that uh, all year long. But uh, in comparison, American horse, the length of her campaign, nobody even came close for me. Yeah, Latruska for me as well. She's my female horse of the year. Uh, Loves Only You ran once in America. It's hard to call her horse of the year off of that. Uh, Malathot, I think, I think people will mention Malathot because Malathot had a terrific three-year-old filly uh, campaign, uh, uh, winning races like the Kentucky Oaks and the Alabama, of course, and she finished ahead of Latruska in their one meeting. That, that didn't do it for me, though, the Breeders' Cup, of course, and neither were the winner. Um, yeah, Malathot ran much better than Latruska, and this gets back again to, is the Breeders' Cup the be-all, end-all? And, and for me, it's not. It's important. It's the most important race of the year, but it's not the be-all, end-all. And Matt, as you said, six great at stakes wins. She did it at six different tracks. She did it all year long. She won four grade ones. Obviously, those were all at different tracks. So despite a tough day at the Breeders' Cup Distaff. It, it, it's Latruska for me, and, and it was, like Matt said, a pretty easy decision. I think we're gonna have the same easy decision when we get to the next category, Matt. It's male horse of the year. Yes, I think so. And I, and I guess for some of the some of the same kind of reasons, the, the the length of the campaign, of course, we're both talking about Nick Scoen here, who uh, had a great campaign from January to November, seven starts, five wins. Uh, his two non victories came in the uh, one of them was a fourth place finish in the Met Mile. That was going one turn. Brian, I don't think we're going to see Nick's go again, going one turn mile uh, uh, with what uh, Brad Cox figured out. And the other fourth was from a trip over to the Saudi Cup. Boy, I'm going to just editorialize for a minute here. I wish our horses would stop going over to those races. Uh, I'd rather see them running here because we get the gaps in their campaigns. I get it, though. There are huge dollars up for grabs um, in the World Cup, in the Saudi Cup, but uh, I'd love to see him running over here a lot more often. Okay, yeah, I, I can't disagree with you on that last thought, Matt, but on the other hand, as an American race fan, we want the good internationals to come over for our biggest races, so perhaps we're being a little selfish on that front, Matt. What do you think? Well, yeah, I guess so. But uh, typically, uh, we get the international horses coming over for the turf. That's right. That's right. And and and, the, and for, for whatever reason, when the international race horses are running, they're running more often. Maybe turf has a big part of that, but uh, they are running more often and they don't seem to have the big gaps in their season. And the fact that these races, Matt's uh, talking about the uh, the Saudi Cup and the Dubai World Cup are early in the year, they, they might only uh, add to the fact that we don't see them running much uh, uh, after these races or immediately after these races. Yeah, Nick Scott did it for me too, Matt. Clearly, he's my male horse of the year. Although, although Matt, before the Breeders' Cup Classic, I was not convinced of that. Uh, I, I thought the three-year-olds had, had, had a real shot, certainly essential quality, Medina Spirit, and, and even Hot Rod Charlie. Um, Hot Rod Charlie and Maxfield were my personal favorites on this, but they could not get it done on the biggest days. Essential Quality Medina Spirit did to an extent, but it was Nick's go. It was all Nick's go in the Breeders' Cup Classic, and that was a defining uh, race for me. And, and as you mentioned, you know, his five wins this year were so impressive. All five of them were so impressive. Three were really big races. The Pegasus World Cup early in the year, uh, mid-year in the Whitney at Saratoga. And then, uh, uh, of course, the end of the year Breeders' Cup Classic. We're going to see him one more time, and that's exciting. Uh, the Pegasus World Cup, before he finally goes off, the son of Painter finally goes off to stud. So we get to see him as something big we have to look forward to coming in January in the Pegasus World Cup, Matt. And that is a perfect segue to our last category of the best of 2021. We're going to award the most promising horse for 2022 award. 
So it's kind of the best of 2021, I guess, but we're, we're, we're talking about the horse we're most excited from, from everything that happened in 2021, who are we most excited about for next year, Matt? Right, exactly, Brian. Uh, uh, we don't always get to see our top horses again the following year, especially after their three-year-old, but we are excited about Life is Good. We were, were excited about everything that we saw last year, and we're excited about Life is Good. Uh, uh, what kind of races he'll show up in? Slated to be the Pegasus World Cup and a possible meeting with Nick's Go uh, in January. And then we'll see. Uh, is uh, Life is good, going to continue at distances of nine furlongs, maybe 10 furlongs, or <clears throat> will he stick to one turn miles or, or all of the above? A lot to look forward to with life is good. Yeah, all of the above is a good way to say it. I, I, I personally think he's on a path very much like Nick's go was a year ago. And, and that's kind of exciting considering what Nick's go this, did this year. Nick's go was beaten in the one turn, one mile, met mile. Uh, life is good. I can certainly see him running in that, but I certainly can see life is good running in really big two turn races this year, all the way up to the Breeders' Cup Classic at Keeneland at the end of 2022, Matt. Yeah, th this award is kind of cool because th there's a lot we're excited about. And of course, we already talked about life is good and Nick's go coming up in the Pegasus World Cup in, in, a, in a little over a month, Matt. So that's exciting. We couldn't pick Nick's go for this award because that's going to be his only race of the year. But Life is Good is going to be back. The son of Into Mischief, really exciting. We could have gone a different way. We could be talking about two-year-olds uh, uh, developing into three-year-olds next year on the Kentucky Derby or maybe Kentucky Oaks Trail. But it's too exciting. Life is Good, um, the potential he showed and, and, and fulfilled to some extent in 2021, but maybe even... Uh, be able to show more of that potential fulfilled next year is pretty exciting. And for those reasons, life is good is our consensus, our, our agreement. We agreed on him as the most promising horse for 2022. All right, Matt, that was a lot of fun looking back at the best of 2021. Now I need your absolute best of 2021 parting shot. Can you give me, can, can you give me the best parting shot you've done all year long, sir? Absolutely, Brian. Hey, winning an Eclipse Award is one thing, and some of these horses that you and I chose today will do that, but getting recognized by Horse Center is another. So I hope you enjoyed the show, everybody, and of course, I want to thank our producer, Ben Wilkie, for putting together the show. Matt, I'm with you. I, I think the Eclipse Awards needs to recognize I guess I'm tooting our own horn here, but I think the Eclipse Awards needs to recognize Horse Center one of these years. What do you say, folks? <laughs> so I want to, yeah, I'm glad you're laughing. I hope people are laughing at home. Uh, I want to thank you all for watching. We're This is kind of our unofficial end of the year show, so I appreciate you watching all year long to, to the silliness and our opinions and our handicapping, sometimes good, sometimes not so good, but it's been a, it's been a great year of racing for the most part here and matt and i are thrilled to bring it to you every week thanks to ben wilkie our awesome producer thanks to derby wars the absolutely best contest site out there folks next week we're going to start 2022 just a little bit early as we look at a huge opening day from santa anita we'll see you then <laughs>